Okay, well, we, we're gonna wait a few more moments for the uh, uh, everyone to enter the virtual room here. Um, we are going to have the parallel session six, lunar geology and landers. I'm Noah Petro, I'm joined by Sarah Valencia. We'll do a more formal introduction in a moment. As a reminder, we're aiming for 10 minute talks. Give a warning at eight minutes, uh, another warning at 10, and then we will uh, de-zoomify you at 12 minutes to move on to our next presentation. Uh, we do have time for discussion and a break at the conclusion of the session. Uh, and so we will try to keep on time so we can respect that. And I do see that our first speaker has entered the room. So uh, Sarah, if you're ready, we can get started. Yeah, okay. Hi everyone. Welcome to the uh, Lunar Geology in Landers section. Our first talk is by Ling Ji Sun on the multispectral imaging and hyperspectral profile of the first dissection for core 73002. So take it away. Okay. Oh, can you hear me? Okay, uh, thanks. So today I will introduce some preliminary results from the spectral measurements of the first dissection for the Apollo 17 core 73002. So this core was collected at the um, station three during the Apollo 17 mission. And this station is located on the light mantle down this south massif next to the Lara crater. Here I have a panorama of the Lara crater. So the core is collected in here and uh, there are also some uh, trench soils uh, collected next to it, which can be used as uh, reference soils for this core. So the double drive tube is now curated at the Johnson Space Center. The whole core is about 60 centimeters in length. Um, so the lower segment is the 73001 and it's sampled about 70 centimeters in depth, but it haven't been opened yet till today. So here is the look of the 73002. It's the upper segment uh, and it is support about 30 centimeters in depth. So uh, when it's extruded from the tube, it's compressed to about 18 centimeters. This core was opened in last December. Our role is uh, mostly measure the spectral uh, data for this core. So the uh, whole core is curated within this glove box. If you look at the schematic diagram on the right, um, we have to observe from the, uh, uh, through the glass wall of this glove box, which limited our uh, uh, measurements to only at visible and near infrared wavelengths. So we have two sets of sys uh, measuring systems. One is the multiband imaging system and the other is the, is the hyperspectral system. So for the multiband imaging system, we covered the wavelengths that is similar to the Clementine ultraviolet visible camera and the hyperspectral system is uh, covering 500 to 1700 nanometers. So this figure is, uh, on the left is the uh, photograph of the whole core and the red circles are the hyperspectral footprints along the core. Um, the two figures on the right are the multiband imaging results. Uh, so the middle one is a reflectance uh, image uh, mosaicing of the whole core at 570 nanometers. We can see the systematic darkening effect on this uh, uh, image and we also made a false colored image of the whole core. The red channel is the 750 versus 415 nanometers, which is sensitive to the spectral reddening effect 
uh, and we can see that on this figure in the on the right, uh, there's this very obvious darkening effect from bottom to top of the core. And these are uh, the spectral darkening and reddening are due to space valerie. So when we plot the whole core over this uh, ratio plot, uh, so the y-axis is the 950 versus 750 nanometers. And the x-axis is the 750 nanometers. Uh, we can see that there's not a lot of variation along this iron axis, but along this optical maturity axis, there is a wide span. Um, so we use the, uh, these equations to calculate the iron abundances and OMAD values, and also the titanium abundances. Then we derived these um, maps. So the top one is the uh, optical maturity. So on the left side is the top. Uh, from bottom to top, we can see this uh, increasing in uh, maturity. But uh, for the iron and titanium, uh, we don't see a lot of variation. It's pretty homogeneous along the whole core, uh, suggesting there, uh, this core might be sampling the same regolith stratigraphy. So when we plot the OMAT variation along the whole core, we can see that the most fresh soils occurs around two thirds from the top. And that's about 20 centimeters uh, of the original sampling depths. And uh, when we apply this uh, sampling uh, regular reworking depths to the equations derived by Dr. Morris et al., uh, we can derive this uh, regular reworking time at 135 million years. And this is consistent with the cosmic re exposure time of rocks collected at the same station to the core. And for the hyperspectral measurements, uh, we can see something similar to what we observed uh, from the multispectral data. That is the systematic darkening and when omelizing the data to 750 nanometers, we can see this reddening effect, but uh, there's no uh, obvious uh, weakening of spectral bands um, might be the reason of these narrow iron abundances along the core, or it's influenced by the grain size variations along the whole core. So we developed a uh, radiative transfer model that can mix both minerals and uh, chemistry at the same time. So we, when we apply this model to the hyperspectral data we measured, uh, we can see a lot of plagioclase and low calcium pyroxene. And uh, so the blue circles are, the, are from the model uh, mineral abundances and the red dots are from the XRD measurements of the model abundances for the reference soils collected next to the uh, core sample. We can see a good consistency from this two data set. And the magnesium number we derived is 61 which is consistent to uh, those soils collected at the same station. To conclude, uh, we observe uh, systematic darkening and reddening from both multispectral images and hyperspectral profile. We mapped the iron and titanium contents for the core and no obvious computational stratigraphy is observed. So from the OMAT variation, we uh, derived a regular reworking depth at 20 centimeters, corresponding to 135 million years of reworking time. The model abundances uh, derived from radiative transfer modeling and hyperspectral profile show abundant plagioclase and also pyroxen exists within the core. And with that, um, it's the end of my presentation. Thank you for listening. Okay, thank you for that, Lingji. Um, the floor is open if anyone has any questions for our speaker. A 
Okay, we have a question. Um, the core was taken from a landslide deposit, yes. Do you attribute the homogeneity to a landslide or just to a regular regolith processes? Oh. <laughs> I think this uh, homogeneity is uh, one because because it's on a landslide and also it's on um, it's kind of on the ejector of this lower crater, so kind of both. Um, all right, thank you, Lingji. Before we continue on, I did want to take a moment to congratulate you on the successful defense of your PhD thesis thank yesterday. Thank you. Um, I can't speak for everyone, but I can absolutely assure you that I would not have been able to give a presentation uh, the day following my PhD defense. <laughs> so I am both uh, very proud and I want to take a moment to congratulate you publicly for uh, uh, an awesome job both yesterday, of course, and today. And I assure you that eventually we'll be able to, to hold meetings and we'll be able to congratulate you in person. But uh, for Thank now, you. a virtual Zoom salute for you. Congratulations. Thanks. And um, excellent backdrop. So, so Sarah, if, uh, if it's okay with you and with Lily, we'll move on to our, our next presenter. Um, and uh, by the way, excellent job staying on, uh, on time uh, with that presentation. So our, our next presenter is Yun Huang, diverse rock types detected at the Lunar South Pole Aiken Basin by the Changi 4 mission. Uh, again, I'll uh, do an alert at eight minutes, 10 minutes, and then 12 minutes, we'll move on. Uh, take away. Hi. Uh... Uh, I should say good morning. Uh, actually, it's night uh, uh, here. Mm -hmm. So uh, today I'm going to present uh, some results uh, of Chang'e 4 mission. Uh, we detect uh, different uh, uh, rock types uh, near the uh, landing region. Uh, if you need more detail, uh, please read our uh, paper published in Geology. Uh, so, the name of the mission is Chang'e, not Change, uh, not Chang'e. Uh, even back in Apollo times, there was jokes about uh, the uh, beautiful lady. So for the uh, Chinese lunar exploration programs, there are three phases. Uh, first is orbiting, uh, which consists of Chang'e 1 and 2, and then landing, which includes uh, uh, Chang'e 3 and 4, and uh, this year, uh, Chang'e 5 and, uh, will be launched and uh, collect a sample from uh, the near side of the moon. Uh, but today, we will focus on Chang'e 4. Uh, as you all know, uh, if you want to land something at the back side of the moon, uh, you need a relay satellite. So, uh, the relay satellite Chuechao was launched uh, two years ago. And uh, then uh, one, year, one year ago, uh, the lander and the rover was launched and it successfully uh, touched down uh, on January 3rd, uh, 2019. Uh, there are several instruments on the lander and the rover. And today we are going to talk about some data uh, acquired uh, by the descending camera, parametric uh, uh, camera, topographic and geologic camera, and the visible and near-infrared spectrometer. As, uh, as you know, uh, there are several um, interesting questions remain uh, for the far side of the moon, especially for the uh, giant hole at the far side. Uh, first is, is there any uh, lower crust or upper mantle materials exposed? Uh, the second is, uh, uh, can we observe a differentiated impact melt sheet? And the third is, what's the composition uh, look like for the far side melt basalt? Uh, as the uh, landing side, uh, uh, with, uh, within a crater named Bonkamen, 
uh, at the north uh, west of the SPA crater. Uh, as you can see from the orbital data, uh, the very superficial uh, material for the uh, landing site uh, is uh, is probably from the uh, impact crater Fison, uh, just northeast of the Von Kármán crater. Uh, and what can we tell from uh, the in situ observations? Can we see uh, mental materials. So we uh, we will talk about the uh, first uh, uh, four days results for the rover, uh, which has uh, been traveled almost 500 meters now. But today we only focus on the first uh, 200 meters. Uh, as you are all familiar with uh, the spectral, you can see. Uh, here we show the um, spectral of the regulars observed in the first four days. Uh, and uh, in this uh, small picture here, uh, this is the uh, footprint of the, uh, is, uh, of the uh, sphere detector. And uh, you can see uh, the red slope of the regulars and uh, uh, features around the one micron and the two micron. Uh, <clears throat> uh, we collaborated with Paul Lucy and uh, uh, use the mineral lookup table. Uh, we removed the continuum between uh, 750 to 1550 uh, nanometer, and we fixed the grain size to 17 uh, micro, and we set the MG number to 65. Uh, and we used uh, <clears throat> four methods to evaluate the spectral uh, feed. Uh, so we plot the mineral abundance uh, to the uh, program, uh, to the, uh, to the plots uh, uh, above. And uh, as you can see, there's some variations, but uh, most of them are uh, dominant uh, for uh, plagioclase and uh, <clears throat> pyroxene. And uh, as you can see, our results uh, about the mineral abundance uh, uh, observed in situ is consistent with the uh, previous work by uh, our, co uh, our colleague, uh, using Kaguya and my data using similar uh, uh, mineral lookup table approach. Uh, so let's switch gears to the uh, ca uh, cameras. Uh, as you all can see in this picture, uh, we see two groups of rocks with different uh, um, tons of uh, tons and uh, one group is uh, uh, dark tones uh, uh, like this one in the middle and we zoom it in with the uh, uh, with the image and uh, you can see there are some uh, white spots uh, uh, on on the dark rock uh, it could be a um, case uh, finalist uh, or they can be uh, uh, pits created by micro impact. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't take a, a visible and near IR spectral of this rock uh, because the uh, rover was busy. Uh, it was busy doing a check and uh, taking images uh, to the lander at that moment. Uh, so uh, at the end of the second day. Uh, we encountered uh, um, a bunch of rocks. Uh, one of them, uh, in, in front of this bunch of rocks, uh, we took a, 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 a visible and near IR spectral of it. And this is the first in situ uh, visible near IR uh, spectral of a lunar rock. Uh, we named the rock uh, uh, informally as Qiyuan, which means uh, um, uh, unexpected encounter. 
uh, so uh, when we zoom in uh, to the rock and uh, we can see similar uh, white spot on the uh, rock, uh, which has similar explanation as pr I previously uh, explained. And uh, this is the uh, image taken from the visible near IR spectrometer. And uh, you can see the uh, <coughs> footprint of the sphere detector. Uh, okay, uh, here I show the uh, spectra of the rock uh, above uh, the spectra of the regolith. As you can see, uh, it's a rock, so it has uh, um, relatively uh, deeper uh, spectral features around the one and the two. Uh, so uh, we try to analyze the spectral uh, quantitatively um, so we room the continuum and uh, uh, we compiled the spectra to the uh, <clears throat> spectra available uh, for the Apollo samples. And as you can compare the uh, center locations and uh, uh, other spectral features I will mention later, uh, we found that the spectra um, is uh, similar to um, materials with a dominant uh, uh, pyroxene and the plagial case. Uh, you're at eight and, minutes, by the way. Oh, thank you. So uh, we compiled the spectral to the uh, remote sensing MQ data as well. And uh, we found similar results. And uh, uh, as, as you can see from the uh, figure uh, on the right corner, uh, previous uh, uh, colleagues results are similar to uh, the results we found. And uh, uh, the materials from the ejector of Fison uh, crater is similar to the uh, landing side and to the in situ uh, measurements. So uh, we did some uh, spectral analysis. Uh, as I mentioned before, we calculate the uh, one microband asymmetry uh, uh, with, with the um, one microband center and the two microband center and uh, band area ratios, which means uh, band area uh, of uh, one and the two. And uh, so we plot all of these and we see the uh, difference, uh, I mean, the, the distance between uh, the rock and uh, all the uh, all the selected Apollo samples, and we, we found out uh, uh, the rock Qi Yuan uh, is uh, likely composed of pyroxene and uh, feldspar dominator sandwich uh, with uh, at most minor olivine. So, uh, how should we interpret the uh, implication of the rock? Uh, as we can see from uh, previous uh, uh, work like uh, Otaka uh, 2014, uh, at the center of uh, SPA basin, uh, it's most likely the, uh, there's a central depression, uh, which may indicate most of the uh, impact melt. And uh, at the location of uh, uh, one common crater, uh, it most likely uh, the ejector uh, uh, is ejected from the fission crater, which is uh, uh, quite far away from the uh, outline, uh, outline of and the impact. You're at 10 minutes, uh, by the way. Uh, yeah, so um, we think uh, mostly uh, the rock Qi Yuan is like a representative of lunar crust. Uh, not from the mantle. So uh, the take home message is uh, Qi Yuan is likely from Fison crater, which is consistent with uh, orbital observation. And Qi Yuan and nearby uh, regolith uh, uh, indicate a, a, a mineral uh, assemblage of feldspar and pyroxene. Um, we don't see olivine rich materials reported by our colleague. Uh, uh, I will stop here and uh, I'm happy to take questions. Thank you. Great, thank you. Uh, we did have one question in the chat. 
uh, I'd suggest actually you go ahead and answer because you directly in the chat after your talk. So we have about 40 seconds if there's anyone who wants to um, uh, raise their virtual hand and ask a question out loud. Yeah, it's just Clive. Um, the, the, were you able to deduce a, a whole rock magnesium number? Because Otaki also suggested the, the crustal materials are higher in magnesium number on the far side than the near side. Uh, it's a good question. Uh, I don't think we can derive an uh, accurate uh, number of uh, mg now. Um, but uh, I think people are trying to derive the uh, MG number. I, I don't know whether I answer your question. <laughs> That's fair enough. So future more, more work to do. Yeah, exactly. Thank <laughs> you, Clive. Okay, why don't we go ahead and move on to our next speaker. Um, our next speaker is Li Chao who will be speaking on Mare Domes and Mare Trinculitatis identification characteristics and implications for the, older, for the oldest lunar volcanism. Hello everyone. Uh, can you hear me and watch my slide? Yes. You and we can see your slides. Okay, so I will go. So hello everyone, good day and good light. Uh, good to be here to talk about our, our work on the Maridomes in Mary Tranquilitatis uh, identification characteristics and the implications for the oldest uh, Lula volcanism. Sorry. I'm Nocha from Shandong University at Weihai in China. Uh, Maridomes are a small and uh, general circular structure with convex upward uh, profile. They usually have very gentle topographic slopes, and uh, they are among the most uh, common and member walking landform on the moon. So, studying their special distribution and the nature will provide very important information for controlling their erupting process, magma composition, and also nature of the magma source region, and that improve our under understanding of the moon. Uh, previous works have already identified the uh, over 300 mile domes on the moon, mainly used uh, telescope and orbital photographies. So why we still uh, looking at them? Uh, because uh, many, many, many domes are very generous slope. Uh, some, uh, many are generally less than five degree and many even less than uh, one degree. So they are not easily identified. Many of the lunar domes can be only at uh, detected from images with very, very low sun emulsions. But obtaining such images is very difficult and the kind of coverage is very limited. But now we have very good real data. We have the global coverage, high resolution, and the high uh, pressing uh, top data, which provide a very powerful tool, tool for identification, ident identify and uh, study the maritime feature on the moon, like the SLD. DM topography data start uh, calculated from uh, Kaguya TCDTM and uh, Lola topography data, which had a resolution about uh, uh, 60 meter and a vertical occurrence of about uh, uh, three meter. Shown here is the example. Uh, uh, the upper one is the the upper one is the is the dome. Identify the previously we can see a very circular feature with a very beautiful submarine pit crater, and the showing below is a, a Leo dome identified by us. Here is the low sand Kaguya TC image. We can see a rise the feature, uh, but but we cannot make sure whether it's a dome feature or not. But the, the topographic data and the map and the profile shows clearly the Mary dome. So we study a project to uh, search. Uh, Maridomes on the moon are also studying their detailed nature. And the, as the first step of this project, we work on the Mary Tranquilitatis. For short, I will just call it Mary T, which have uh, many, many Maridomes and also identified as a, a large shaded volcano by spirits. We use the SLDM topographic data, 
uh, with a lot with other uh, topography and the images to evaluate the versus and the meridome identifications and also such new dome. And then we study the detailed nature of each dome. So Harris Mariti is the landing target of the Apollo 11 mission. So it's one of the best studied uh, Mary and Moon. It has the highest titanium content uh, by the and the moon, and, but it also show central composition variation. So this indicates a very complicated and the multi-stage volcanic eruptions. And the use data, use crater counting method, having at all uh, calculate the age of this marble cell. We find that all but only one marble cell unit are older than three and a half billion years old. Put this age in the global, in the context of global memory, we can see that memory T is absolutely the oldest memory on the moon. Uh, this picture showing the different age, uh, the age ages of the different memory units uh, within the many memory. Uh, and memory T is here. Oh, sorry. So uh, firstly, we use the Leo top five data to evaluate the previous memory uh, identification, there are generally three major studies. We confirm some ones, but also reject some, some meridome identifications. So in total, we confirm the 93 uh, domes, and we also find the seven possible ones, and the uh, 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 10th are negative identifications. Then we use the topography data to uh, search new domes in MERIT, uh, as a result, we identify 96 new domes and also find many uh, possible uh, domes. So in total, combine hours and the previous identifications, we have uh, 189 confirmed domes, also plus nearly 100 possible uh, ones. So Marity contains one of the highest density of many domes among the entire Lula Mary. Uh, this is the area density of the uh, many domes in the MERIT, we can say two obviously concentrated errors. Uh, one is in the uh, lost edge and another in the south, uh, south region. Uh, here are some e examples of the MERIT domes in MERIT. We can say some are generally, are generally circular or generally circular, and some are uh, elliptical or some are generally irregular. Many Many domes have submitted Peter features. Here are the topography profiles. Uh, then we mirror their uh, dome base diameter. We, have, we find that they are between uh, two and uh, 23 kilometers. This is generally within the range of previous studies. However, our new data, the high resolution topography enable us to discover many uh, smaller domes. We also uh, measure their height and find that they are between uh, 20 and 400 meters. And then we study the submeter uh, Peter crater features uh, of my domes. They are commonly, though not always, observed at the tops of my domes. Among our domes, we find we find over we find the 124 have submeter Peter features and on. Uh, over eight have possible ones and the others lack of it. And the presence or absence of submeter Peter crater seems to be independent from the diameter, height, or shape of the host uh, Mary Dome feature. And uh, here's the distribution of the ma distribution map of the submeter Peter crater identifications. We have uh, different color means different uh, uh, possible ones and confirmed ones or just the absence. Here are some examples of the uh, seven Peter crater. Some are generally circular and some are elliptical and some are more irregular. A very unusual shape of the uh, seven Peter crater are the very elongated uh, uh, piece. They are very known and narrow. Uh, we don't have, we don't say such shape for many domes, but we say it for the seven Peter craters. Uh, we, I measure their diameter, find they are less than four kilometer, and we also plot their the submeter Peter diameter against the dome base diameter. 
uh, two previous studies have found a linear relationship between the two diameters. But our color finds that we, it shows a very wide range and we don't have such simple uh, relationship. This is probably because our color have very huge, very huge meridon problem. We have nearly uh, 300 meridon, but this two function is fitted from over just uh, tens of meridons. And we also uh, uh, calculate their depth and the pro and the, okay. And we find that the ratio is the uh, depth over diameter ratio have a wide range and, and nearly half uh, are general than impact craters on the moon. Uh, another interesting finding is that we find that uh, uh, nearly half submeter Peter craters, their floor is topically lower than the surrounding Mary. Uh, this cannot be determined from the top from image data only and suggests a second phase uh, submeter Peter collapse process during the formation of the submeter Peter crater. And then we also study the composition. We find that uh, uh, they have a wide range of titanium content, but their iron content are really homogeneous. And finally, we also check the uh, age of the background memory. We find uh, 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 276 domes have allocated or, or just near uh, 19 crater population dated memory unit, or but only one dome that are hosted in memory unit that are over three and a half billion years old. <clears throat> so put this in the context of the global memory ages, we can say that we can say these are just generally contemporaneous with the peak period of global lunar memory, but only span a very narrow, narrow temporary, just the one tenth of the longevity of lunar volcanoes. This indicates that the small shade building eruption may be a, a prevalent eruption style in the earlier stage of lunar volcanoes. Okay, finally, uh, here are our conclusions. We find that nearly one, 200 meridomes and uh, uh, another uh, 100 po possible ones and uh, Many of them have some meter craters, and we don't have such a, we don't have find a simple 